Uh, I'm Harbir Singh. I'm on the Wharton faculty and uh, co-director of the MAC Center, uh, working on issues of strategic alliances and acquisitions and how they can be used to commercialize technology. So several things. I think the first thing is that many decision makers in companies uh, view customers transactionally. And I think they have to learn that customers are in fact could be partners. And, and so part of it is to make that transition that the customer could, some customers could be my partners. Now some companies have lead customers, they've done that. Um, many companies have customer design studios like Toyota and so on for their new models um, the, or the car industry. But to get all the way to co-creation means you really have to work much more closely with your customers and it's not an easy relationship because on one hand they're buying your products and services, on the other hand you're getting some information from them. So it comes down to whether you can build a relationship like this, whether you're your team that works with customers has the capacity to play these multiple roles. Then the other issue is uh, internal, uh, that some companies, the companies that have a more kind of hierarchical and a kind of a formal boundary within the firm, the firm and the outside, they have a much harder time than the firms that are flatter organizations. So. So there are those kinds of issues as well. And the third thing is the use of uh, information technology. Companies that use a variety of social media or have platforms that can you know, process social media, they are more likely to use this because the, the worst thing you can do is get the input and then not offer any reaction to it. So those are the three main things. So if you look at... Um, the auto industry, I think you can see quite a bit of variation. You have uh, companies like Toyota and Mercedes and Audi who have actually done a lot of uh, customer trials, lead customers. Uh, I'm a long-time Toyota customer and I get um, you know, messages from them about new cars and they give you a, you know, they invite you to a driving experience. And this is partly to build loyalty, but it's partly to get feedback on a free feedback on the product. So that's an example of you know being more proactive and trying to come up with the next design. Um, Audi does the same thing. I was in Europe uh, last summer, last winter in Switzerland and they had a, a free demonstration of uh, four-wheel drive Audis on a frozen lake. So they were showing how to, you know, they were, they were showing you how it can, in fact they turned the uh, the, the, the slip control off, so it was sliding all over the place, and you turn it on and it starts going straight, you know, and when you brake, it doesn't slide as much. So it was a way to sort of build, so it stuck in my mind, it's very interesting, but I just went there saying it's a free demonstration and maybe interesting, uh, and it, it, it really then stuck in my mind, and they were really asking all kinds of questions. So that's in the auto industry. We see quite a bit, of course, in the, you know, in the Apple stores, for example, where the agent talking to you is not just selling you the product, they're also trying to understand how you're dealing with the ergonomics and so on. So those are two examples. So, you know, uh, fundamentally, uh, companies need to invest in some kind of partnering capability. And, you know, there are certain industries where partnering capability, in fact, is the dominant capability. One of them is, in fact, the credit card industry. If you are running Visa or MasterCard, their whole existence is based upon tens of thousands of relationships with banks and with vendors. So those are entirely network organizations. So for them, managing partners is, is actually the key skill, and sometimes the internal competence is not as high. Most companies have the reverse issue. They're very good with their internal competencies and not good enough with partners. So one way of thinking about co-creation is to look at industries like travel or like um, you know, the, the charge card industry or even certain organizations like, for example, the conference board, which relies on thousands of members, and sort of ask what are the processes they have in place because their survival is dependent on those relationships. 
many companies are too casual about these these kinds of things and as a result they leave a lot of value on the table 